In this example two, um, we are given a cross-section of the beam as shown here. Um, the overall depth of the beam is D. is uh, 450 millimeter. The width of the beam, that is B, is equal to 250 millimeter. The effective depth of the, up to the center of the reinforcement is small d, 400 millimeter. And we have three reinforcement, uh, that is normal rein deformed bars, normal ducted bars of 24 millimeter um, diameter. And we are asked to draw the stress, strain, and force profile for the section. And um, we are also asked to find the nominal moment capacity MU as well. And we need to find the design moment capacity phi MU as a next step. Now let us first draw the stress strain uh, and the force profile for this cross section. Uh, let us draw this one. Um, so first let's draw the strain profile so we are drawing it at the ultimate um, load scenario so we we neglect this the concrete below the steel so we are just taking the strain in the steel level as you can see this is the strain at the steel level and this is the compressive strain in the concrete in the compression. So this would be your strain profile. In here, uh, this is the steel strain epsilon st, and this is the steel uh, com uh, concrete compression strain at the extreme compression fiber, which is 0 0.003 when the concrete started to crush, and the neutral axis depth. The neutral axis depth is given by KUD. So this is the strain profile. So now let us draw the stress profile. So using the equivalent stress block um, information. So this is the uh, equivalent stress block for concrete. So this is the equivalent stress block for concrete and the steel is taking the stress. Um, this is sigma ST and the width of the compression stress block as you know is um, alpha 2 FC dash and the depth of the compressive stress block is gamma KUD. Now if you draw the force, force profile here, um, so the compressive force is acting here, the tensile force is acting at the steel, and the tensile force is acting at the steel, and the distance between the compressive force and the tensile force is called as a lever arm Z. Now this one is the stress profile. And this one is a force profile.
So once we have drawn uh, the stress, strain, and the force profile, we can analyze this beam. So in this um, in this example, uh, we are given that the compressive strength of concrete FC dash is thirty two megapascal. Now with with the compressive strength, now we can find out the parameter alpha 2 and gamma for the equivalent stress block. So um, using the design code, alpha 2 is given by 0 0.85 FC dash. So if you put FC dash as 32 megapascal, we will get this as 0 0.802. Similarly, gamma is given by equation 0 0.97 minus 0.97. So this is coming from AS 3600. Now we know that compressive force uh, acting in uh, in here can be computed as the volume of the equivalent stress plus diagram. So um, we know C equal to alpha uh, C equal to alpha two F C dash gamma K U D multiplied by B. Now in this parameter everything is known except for K U. So we need to find K U to solve this, uh, to find the compressive force. So to do that, uh, what we do is we assume the type of the failure, and then we will check whether our assumption is correct or not. So uh, we know that there are three different kinds of failure. That is a tension failure, compression failure, and balance failure. So let us first assume that it is a tension failure, uh, and then proceed um, to find KU. And then we will check whether the beam is actually failing in tension or not. If it is failing in tension, all good. If not, we have to change in the, the failure mode into the compression failure mode and do the analysis again. So to start with, um, because we don't know the value of KU, so we assume the beam fails in tension mode. Now if the beam fail in tension mode, you know that the strain in the steel would be greater than epsilon SY, which implies that the stress in the steel sigma ST is should be equal to FSY. And we know that the stress, uh, the yield strength of the steel is 500 megapascal. So now looking back into the, um, the strain and the stress profile, uh, by assuming that it is a tension failure, epsilon ST is now greater than epsilon SY. And we know that the sigma ST, the stress in the steel, is actually the yield strength of the steel. So with this assumption, our equation, we can simplify it. And we will see that. Now, using the horizontal equilibrium of the forces, C should be equal to T. The compression force should be equal to the tensile force. So uh, putting the values of C should be equal to AST, the area of steel multiplied by the stress in the steel. As we are assuming that it is a tension failure, we can write it as FSY. In this equation, AST stands for the area of steel. Um, we have three N24 bars, so the area of steel is uh, 24, that's the diameter of the bar. So the total area of steel is 1357 millimeters square. Now, plugging the values back into this equation, we can find KU. Area of steel we have now is 1357. 
FSY yield strength of the steel is 500 megapascal divided by alpha 2 we have find out is 0 0.802 the compressive strength of concrete is 32 megapascal gamma we found it at 0 0.89 and the effective depth of the beam is 400 millimeter and the width of the beam is 250 millimeter so we know all of these parameters so we can compute KU as 0 0.2 297 we see that now we found out the KU by assuming that it is a tension failure that is the steel is yielding before the concrete crushes so now we have to check whether our assumption is correct or not by finding out the actual strain in the steel and whether it is yielding or not so let's check the uh, if our assumption is correct or not using the strain compatibility question we will check the strain in the steel but we know that the strain compatibility question epsilon st the strain in the steel can be written in terms of the strain in the concrete we already know the actual value of the KU here so we can find out Uh, the strain in concrete is 0 0.003 so we find out that the strain in the steel by this equation comes out to be 0 0.007 and we know that the yield strain of the steel is 0 0.0025 that's where the steel yields so the steel our steel strain is greater than epsilon is why that means the steel is yielding which implies that the steel has already yielded so um, our assumption we started with the assumption that the strain in the steel is greater than epsilon sy that means it fails in tension mode and we found out that the strain in the steel is actually greater than epsilon sy and it is a tension failure mode there therefore our assumption of tension failure is okay if it wasn't okay we have to go back and um, do the analysis for the compression failure mode so luckily this come out as a, um, as a tension failure mode so our um, calculation is okay and we can proceed to find the nominal moment capacity so proceeding to find the nominal moment capacity like we defined earlier um, MU so just rewriting the force profile here it is compressive force and the tensile um, the tensile force is acting other way t and the distance between the compression force and the tensile force is the lever arm z so we can find the ultimate moment capacity by taking moment about the point of application of c so it is the tensile force multiplied by the lever arm so t uh, multiplied by Z or this bending moment capacity is um, T is the area of the steel multiplied by the yield strength of the steel because steel is already yielding as we found out and the lever arm Z as we know is D minus gamma KU D over 2 so just writing down the area of the steel is 1357 um, yield strength of steel is 500 megapascal the effective depth is 400 millimeter gamma is 0 0.89 KU we found at 0 0.29 um, the effective depth is 400 millimeter so that gives us uh, the equivalent um, 
the nominal moment capacity as 235.5 kilonewton meter so in kilonewton meter the ultimate moment capacity is 235.5 Now the question also asks us to find the design moment capacity. CD design moment capacity is given by uh, the strength reduction factor phi multiplied by mu. So phi in this case is given by table 2.8 3600 2.2.2 .2 gives the strength reduction factor for concrete and phi uh, for flexure bending is uh, given as 1.24 minus 13 KU not divided by 2 well and it has to be less than 0 0.85 so if you put down the value of KU here it comes as 0 0.91 as the maximum value of uh, phi that we can take is 0 0.85 so therefore this implies that phi is 0 0.85 the maximum value is 0.85 so we take 0.85 now once the phi is known we can find out the design moment capacity phi mu as 0.85 multiplied by mu which we already know is 235.5 kilonewton meter and that gives us the ultimate moment capacity as 200 uh, sorry it's a, a design moment capacity as 200.18 kilonewton meter Therefore, the design moment capacity phi mu is 200.18. So in this way, we can find out the ultimate moment capacity of uh, this beam.